Hi everybody, Fintan here from Dams and Cloud and this week I want to talk about frontline workers and particularly the frontline worker plan or SKU that Google has that can help enable these workers within an organization. So if you're a business that has frontline workers or sometimes called deskless workers, over COVID the term frontline worker became very popular, common, but essentially an employee that isn't sitting at a desk like I am now uh, and working away on a computer, then this is a plan or SKU that, that uh, could be very cost effective for you as an organization or business. And we have customers who are small businesses who have frontline workers and have implemented this and very, very large customers with thousands of employees um, who have implemented this. And again, as I said, it can be a large cost saving for you as a business while also maintaining the security features uh, that, that businesses and enterprises need. So I'm going to go through uh, a couple of different areas. I'm going to go through what is the frontline worker SKU? What are the scenarios where you might need it or use it? What are the limitations of it that you need to know about? Uh, we can also talk about the cost. Um, and what are the sort of FAQs that some customers have when implementing frontline workers, uh, the frontline worker plan? So firstly, what, 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 what is it? So the frontline worker SKU is a, is a plan or, or, or SKU from Google that is, has enterprise level features when it, in terms of security and things like that, but, but Google have reduced uh, some of the, the features, uh, like for example, in a Google meeting, you, you know, a frontline worker is unlikely to, to be needing to use recordings and polls and Q&A and breakout rooms in a Google Meet like a, a desk-based worker uh, would be. They can still participate in them and someone else can be doing the breakout rooms and things like that, but they're unlikely to be the ones driving that as a frontline worker. So um, it, it ha Google have reduced some of these sort of you know, extraneous features that a frontline worker just would not need or use and therefore have been able to offer the plan at a much, much more cost effective level, okay? So that's the idea of the frontline worker plan. There are two versions of it. There is a frontline uh, standard, uh, sorry, excuse me, frontline starter and frontline standard. The frontline standard, uh, primarily the, the difference is it has Google Vault and it has some additional security features as well. Um, we will uh, do maybe a downloadable with a, a comparison of the, of the two. Uh, one of the, the major restrictions to be aware of is that, that a frontline worker is restricted to five gigabytes of storage and they don't have the ability to be an editor on a shared drive. So that's one of the caveats. Um, I think what's important maybe though, um, before we kind of dive into it, is to talk about frontline workers themselves. So 80% of the global work, workforce are actually frontline workers. And, and so there's, you know, this is a huge cohort um, of the, the world's workers who are deskless, who are often in service or healthcare or retail, um, and are often consumers of, of information, and they often need information and data to perform a task. Now, what, what, um, what Google has found and what, what surveys of frontline workers have found is that they often don't have access to the tools that they need to do their jobs. So they will sometimes be using personal mobile devices to access corporate information. Uh, corporate information is being sent to maybe personal Gmail or Hotmail accounts. And so that data is leaving the organization, uh, you know, being consumed on a personal device, on a personal account. And when that employee leaves the business, they're, they're technically taking that data with them. Uh, frontline workers, for, for, for them, they often find that it's frustrating to access the information. They don't have access to things like intranets and you know, sort of the, the, the ease of, of access to the corporate information that, a, that their desk-based colleagues would, would often have access to. Uh, and so that can lead to kind of a, a couple of things uh, for them. It's hard to have um, effective communication. They, they have sort of you know, access in, in a sort of a, a, a mishmash sort of a way to, to, to corporate systems, maybe through a shared computer or a shared device. Um, maybe they have some sort of limited access on their, their personal devices. And, and what it often leads to um, is that, that fragmented technology often leads to a loss of productivity and efficiency. The employees can sometimes be frustrated and, and it can increase the, the turnover of staff. Uh, it can sometimes lead, which is what um, companies don't want, it can lead to a poor end user experience for the customer and it can sometimes lead to impact on your brand identity and sort of customer churn. And again, because the, the frontline workers don't have access to the information and the knowledge that they need to actually um, 
uh, you know, action, what they, what they need to do as a frontline worker, you know, it, it can cause those sort of business problems. And then the last one I've sort of mentioned already, it's that security risk. So you're, you're letting data leave your organization in a lot of cases by having to send this information to uh, personal accounts. We came across a customer once that, that was sending information to thousands of, of employees on their personal devices on personal email accounts. And with the frontline worker SKU, we were able to bring all of that information um, so, you know, securely into the, into the corporate sphere and in a cost-effective manner because the frontline worker SKU is, is much, much um, more cost-effective than some of the enterprise plans. So <clears throat> for, um, for, for Google, the, as I said, the, the two plans that are available is this frontline uh, starter and frontline standard. Um, some of the, the kind of uh, um, FAQs that we get from customers is the share drives piece that I mentioned. So are your frontline workers going to need to edit documents en masse? Now, there are some workarounds to this where you can have a group, you can add the group to a, a, a file, but you can't add them to a shared drive and have them be able to, to edit the, the files in that shared drive. They can have view access and be sort of commenters and, and viewers, but not that sort of edit capability en masse. So that's something just to, to, to be aware of. The limitation of the five gigs, as I mentioned before, also really, really important. Um, but I think, as I said, it's a fantastic way to, to give access to um, your, your employees who often, as frontline workers, will feel disconnected from the organization because they don't have an email address and they don't have access to the internet and things like that. And, and our experience is when customers do use the frontline worker SKU to kind of connect with those, those workers, they feel more part of the organization. They're able to engage a company all hands. They're able to join you know, the company all hands Google Meet broadcast and ask questions and things like that. Um, access documentation that they need to, to do their jobs, but also engage with their their colleagues as well on things like Google Chat. So it, it, it really enables those frontline workers and that's kind of the goal of the frontline worker um, plan for Google. And another interesting one is AppSheet. So AppSheet is Google's no-code solution and a lot of customers will use the frontline worker SKU to give the, the frontline workers access to their general corporate environment and secure them, identity management, all that kind of stuff, all the good security that comes with Google. But also with AppSheet, you can then start to develop applications, automate some areas that maybe in the business were previously manual or didn't have a, an application, that then can be deployed down to those end users and again, securely accessed via their account, their frontline worker uh, account. So um, it is very, very valuable. I am going to find out the exact price of both because I know that is going to be a question. So the last area I wanted to cover was pricing. Uh, I had to go and find that because I didn't have it open. Uh, in dollars, just to give a comparison, the frontline worker starter is $5 and the frontline worker standard, which has the um, Google Vault and some of the additional security is $12 per user per, per month. Um, in euros, that is four euros 70 for the uh, lower one and 11 uh, euros 50 for the higher one. And in pounds, that's four pounds 20 and 10 pounds for the higher one. So you can see when we compare that with say one of the, the premium SKUs, SKUs, if you were a customer on enterprise, you would be paying um, you know, in the region of uh, $276 for Enterprise Standard or $360 um, for Enterprise Plus in, in dollars. And again, similar sort of prices in, in Euro and Sterling. So if you're a company that's got you know, a, a thousand uh, employees and you've got you know, 500 employees who are frontline workers, you don't want to be paying $360 a user for your enterprise plan particularly when these users don't need all of those features, as I mentioned. So the frontline worker SKU makes it more accessible. We often find that companies may not have had, as I said, technology or accounts for these users ever. And so it's the first time they're actually getting access to email, which is great. Um, or if you're moving over from some other plan, it's a massive cost saving, okay? In terms of some of the admin overheads that I mentioned, um, you will end up, if you've got a, a, another primary plan, which you, you will, you will end up with what, what's called PDL, partial domain licensing. So from an admin point of view, when an admin creates a user, they need to decide, is this a frontline worker or is this an enterprise desk-based worker or whatever uh, the case may be. Some customers might even have three plans, a business plan as well. 
Um, we do find after like two plans is fine. And you can generally have rules around that. Um, you can also create automations. So we've created scripts for customers. Someone is added to a frontline worker group um, or org unit and therefore they're assigned the frontline worker SKU um, license. So um, you can automate those kinds of things um, with various tools and scripts and stuff like that and that can help. But generally it's down to you as a business and from a HR standpoint, what's your criteria for someone being a frontline worker or not? Um, and sometimes it can be, you know, sometimes people think, well, it would be obvious. Where it kind of blurs the lines is you might have someone who's technically a frontline worker, but they're a manager and they're sometimes in the office and they are, they're managing a group of frontline workers. Maybe they need an enterprise license because they need to be able to edit documents and manage documents. So it's just something to think about uh, in terms of the, the kind of admin overhead. But a, an excellent uh, feature and plan and, and a great way, as I said, to engage those users and workers and save a, um, a huge amount of money as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was valuable to learn about the Frontline Worker Plan and SKU. Do check out our YouTube channel and our LinkedIn uh, where we produce regular content, as well as our um, website where we have uh, uh, this content on our blog. We often have downloadable content about whatever the topic is. I know for the Frontline Worker one, we will um, have a downloadable uh, PDF about Frontline Workers uh, for you to learn more. So please go there and, and check out that content and, and um, hopefully it's of, of value to you. Thanks very much for listening to me and I will talk to you guys next week.